We're here with uh, Nasser Al Saidi. He's um, the chief economist at the Dubai International Financial Center and also speaker at this year's St. Gallen Symposium. Thank you very much, Mr. Al Saidi, for, for granting us some of your precious time here. Thank you for inviting me to be with you. It's my pleasure because it's the first time I can join you at uh, the St. Gallen Symposium. Yeah, it's our honor. Thank you. Now, talking about the Arab regions and you as a profound expert on economic issues in, in the Middle East, what are the key economic challenges transitional governments are facing in Egypt and Tunisia? It's very clearly high unemployment of young people. All of these countries which are facing problems, including those that are not currently facing problems, have very young populations. Um, the average is 60% across the MENA region are below 29, 29 years of age. This is accompanied by high youth unemployment which has been exacerbated by the fact that countries that had exported labor, such as Morocco, Tunisia, Algeria, into Europe, saw those young people come back because of recession in, in Europe. So that has exacerbated the problems. So governments face problems of inflation, high unemployment. Now tourism is going down. Foreign direct investment is down because people do not want to invest until there's greater clarity as to what are the economic policies, what will be the political outcome of the transformations and changes, and as well um, their ability to trade with the rest of the world is also being affected because output has also gone down. At the same time, in terms of the financial markets, we've seen their borrowing costs have gone up, so the risk premium um, in both equity markets, uh, credit default swaps, um, their ability to borrow internationally uh, has deteriorated very substantially. So the big problem that governments face is um, how to control uh, budgetary expenditures because now they're having to increase food and fuel subsidies, which already represent easily 20% uh, and 25% of government expenditure. So all of those are, are subsidies, and they're rising as a result of higher uh, food and fuel prices. So those are the pressures. And at the same time, they need to deal with this unemployment, which was a major contributory factor to uh, the blow up that, that we've seen. So many problems. That means that the international community uh, has got to be active. That means that institutions like the World Bank, the IMF, but also the EU, uh, the EIB, uh, and others have got to contribute to the effort. We've seen the GCC countries coming to the help of some of the countries in, in the region that were affected um, because it is in their strategic interests. And I think we'll see more of that. Uh, but this requires a collective effort. At the same time, um, very simply, the countries that have been affected by problems have got to solve their own problems. Um, this is a transformation that has to be owned by the countries where the transformation is taking place. You could not manage it from outside. Um, talking about Dubai, um, the, your country has repeatedly profited from crises in the region in the past. Now, will the recent upheavals in the Arab world turn out to be a blessing or a curse for Dubai in the long term? Oh, it's cl very clear that Dubai at the moment is a safe haven. Um, it has the infrastructure, it has the political stability, uh, it has the openness. As a result, uh, we've seen businesses uh, migrate away from countries that were affected by the crisis uh, towards Dubai. Um, it's important on the other side that Dubai can play that role because it removes pressure and it means that instead of companies and people leaving the region completely, they come to Dubai if only temporarily. So uh, that is a good safety valve. So it's a safe haven, but also a safety valve for others. It also means that um, Dubai benefits uh, clearly, but what we need to do is to build on that. That is to say, we need to be much more engaged. And that's why I'm suggesting, for example, that we should establish a MENA region bank for reconstruction and development. Uh, I think the time is ripe for that. And the GCC countries, as a result of the higher oil prices, are able to be major contributors to that. And I think it's in the interests um, of Europe, the United States, but also countries like China, countries like Turkey, 
to also participate in the establishment of such a MENA region, Bank for Reconstruction and Development. You need sustained effort because you are in a transition period. It's not a matter of giving aid in 2011, no, or, or increased help, no. You need a sustained effort that will help you uh, invest in infrastructure, uh, education, um, help in the transformation of the economies at the same time as you're having a political transformation. Those two have to go together. Um, locals of Arab origin in, in Dubai, they often struggle to find access to the job market, which is dominated by expatriates, as you, as you already mentioned. Um, how do you intend to tackle this issue? Or how can we make it safe that locals are also well integrated into the local job market in Dubai? Well, the truth is that the free zones um, have attracted many businesses. They've been a major source of foreign direct investment, and they've also been a major source of attracting expatriates. But it is also true that the knowledge and capital and technology that's in the free zones is also seeping through into the rest of the economy. So uh, UAE nationals uh, are also into joint ventures. Um, we know that 90% of the businesses are small and medium enterprises. Um, so a major effort has to be done in that direction. And um, the young Emiratis are now better educated than, the, than they were before. The number of university graduates uh, with the right type of education is now much higher than it was in the past. So their ability to adapt to change, their ability to get jobs is better than it was in the past. It's still a challenge in, in, in some sectors. But the fact that you've diversified your economy allows, you to, allows them to find jobs. Mm. Um, so economic diversification is key, really, to dealing with unemployment across the GCC economies, as well as in many countries of the region. Um, the services sector is certainly one which has been expanding very rapidly. Uh, tourism, um, all professional services have also been growing very rapidly. Even in the banking financial sector, that has attracted uh, many young Emiratis um, for the very reason that uh, in many cases, uh, particularly retail banking and financial services, are person to person. Uh, and therefore, people prefer to deal with young Emiratis, particularly if they are Emiratis. So that's a sector that, is, that has been attracting them, but services in general. Mm -hmm. You've already been talking about it. Um, roughly 70% of Dubai residents um, um, have mi immigrated from other countries. 85%. 85% already. So, hypothetically, what does the government plan to do if they leave the country immediately, um, given a serious crisis? Well, that is really um, uh, purely hypothetical. Let me say why. Um, in the past, um, many of the foreign workers were there just for the construction industry. They helped build the infrastructure, the buildings, the office space, etc. That, that Dubai has. Um, but over the past 10 years, the composition of the labor force has changed. So now you're talking about higher skilled professionals. And because Dubai is very open um, and allows you to own your own property, uh, have your own business in the free zones, um, there's zero uh, corporate tax, zero personal income tax. That has attracted people to want to stay long term. At the same time, Dubai has invested in the educational sector. So you have schools, elementary schools, high schools, and universities. So now I think the big contrast with, say, just 10 years ago and today is that people are moving complete families um, and setting down roots. They can own their own house. And they have a job, and they now have a stake in staying longer. That's certainly true for many Arab nationals uh, who migrated, who had left the region. This was part of the brain drain away from the main region to Europe, the United States, and elsewhere. And many of those people are coming back. Um, and since they speak the language, they know the culture, they can adapt very easily. But I'm also seeing uh, people from as far away as Australia, South Africa, Europe, uh, Great Britain, US, also settling down in Dubai uh, because they speak the language. Uh, English is very, very commonly spoken. So, and the fact that it's a very open society from that point of view uh, helps you adapt and, and stay longer term. 
Thanks very much, Mr. al Saidi, for this conversation and enjoy your time at the symposium. Thanks. Thank you, Thank you for having me here. And good luck. Thank you.